good morning, everybody. Um, I'm just going to explain the draft uh, ballot paper, which will be um, which will be on the screen. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, this weekend marks a break with how the Assembly has traditionally carried out its business. Our work programme to date has allowed us to consider topics over a number of weekends. In light of the extension received from the Houses of the Oireachtas, um, we must complete our work on the remaining two topics, today's topic and the next topic, uh, by the end of March this year. For this reason, yesterday, we began our consideration of the topic, the manner in which referenda are held, and this morning we will formulate our recommendations to be sent to the Houses of the Oireachtas on this topic. This is the first occasion um, where we've examined an issue and made recommendations over the course of one weekend. And we will replicate this model for our next topic, which, as you know, is fixed term parliaments. Uh, this change is particularly evident regarding the preparation of the draft ballot paper. Um, a draft ballot paper prepared by the Secretariat in consultation with the expert advisory group after the conclusion of the proceedings yesterday evening, and it went on until about eight o'clock, I hasten to add, has been circulated to the members uh, this morning. Ultimately, it is a matter for you, the members, to decide on the ballot paper before any voting can take place. This means that you can add questions, suggest new wording, or indeed remove questions. Um, following the Assembly's rules of business, we will decide questions about the content and design of the ballot paper based on a show of hands. This is the first opportunity the members have had to view the draft ballot paper. I would remind everyone that although this is unusual um, for the Assembly, it is the primary way uh, in which our predecessor, the Convention on the Constitution, functioned and produced recommendations. Um, before the members go into private session to discuss the draft ballot paper, I want to provide a brief explanation of each of the questions to explain what the question is trying to get at, what each of the options presented to the members mean, and in some cases why certain terminology has been used. A copy of each question will go up on the screen um, uh, as I'm explaining it for the benefit of those watching online. A copy of the draft ballot paper will also appear on our website for those who wish to follow uh, the process at home. Following the roundtable discussions, the members of the expert advisory group, uh, Rachel Walsh, Oren Doyle, Robert Elgie, John Gary, Theresa Reedy and Kevin Rafter, together with the chair and the secretariat, will be available to answer any questions. Time has been included on the agenda to allow any amendment agreed by the members to be included in the ballot paper. As I've mentioned, the results of the final ballot will form the basis of the recommendations to be made to the Houses of the Oireachtas. So I'm going to now uh, draw your attention to the draft ballot paper structure. Uh, as you'll see, the draft ballot paper is broken down into three sections as follows. A, organization of referendum campaigns. B, voting in a referendum, and C, citizens' initiatives. Now, I'll I, 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 I go on to deal now with each question in turn. Question one. Question one is the first question in section A, um, which in section A, as I've pointed out, is organization of referendum campaigns. And the question asks, do you think the functions of the referendum commission should be carried out by a permanent electoral commission? That's the question. This question was informed by the material <coughs> presented to the Assembly from a number of speakers uh, we have heard over the course of the weekend. The issue also emerged, as you are no doubt aware, in feedback from the members following sessions three and four and also sessions five and six yesterday. In terms of reporting for this question, you are asked to mark X in one box, either yes or no. A majority, and therefore the recommendation of the Assembly, will be determined by reference to the total votes cast in favour of yes or no, with the answer with the highest number of votes uh, deemed to be the majority. Now we'll move on to question two. Um, the 
the recommendation, the, sorry, the referendum commission remains the focus of this second question. It asks, do you think the referendum commission should be obliged to give its view on significant matters of factual or legal dispute that arise during a referendum campaign in the public domain, including social media? Now, Mark Brennock, um, in his paper yesterday, explained the role the Referendum Commission plays. He explained that more recent referendum commissions have intervened to outline their own view of what effect a referendum will have, occasionally clarifying issues and dispute. However, they are not obliged to do so. In their feedback, many members suggested an enhanced role for the Referendum Commission, particularly in respect of factually incorrect claims. This question is designed to allow the members to vote on whether such an enhanced role is appropriate. Many members express particular concerns about the role of social media, and that is why that is specifically referenced. Um, the members are again asked to vote yes or no, and the option that receives the highest number of votes will be the recommendation of the Assembly. Now, moving on to question three. This question concerns what we discussed yesterday as the McKenna principles, um, which were outlined to us in Conor O'Mahony's paper and presentation. Simply put, the McKenna principles interpret the Constitution as precluding the government from spending public money on advocating one side of a referendum campaign. With this in mind, the question asks, and you'll see it on the screen. Do you agree with the current position where the government is not permitted to spend public money to advocate on one side only of a referendum campaign? Now, the members have a simple yes or no choice in response to this question. And um, a change of the current position uh, would have to be effected by an amendment to the Constitution um, following a referendum. Question four. Uh, question four continues to examine spending in referendum campaigns. Governments have, have implemented the McKenna principles by allocating no public funds to referendum campaigns. However, they could have chosen to allocate funds equally to both sides of a referendum campaign. This question asks the members whether that approach would be preferable. And the question is, do you think the government should provide money to both sides equally in referendum campaigns. We heard yesterday how uh, traditional media, such as television, radio, and print media, uh, continue to play a vital role in informing the public on a, a referendum proposal. For certain cohorts of society, um, it can be the sole source of information. Um, then moving on to question five. Um, question five is also about spending in referendum campaigns. Conor O'Mahony in his paper yesterday explained how some countries impose spending limits uh, rather than donation limits. Uh, several members suggested that um, they should vote on a recommendation re relating to this. Having discussed the issue with the EAG, I'm of the view that this raises complicated issues about the interaction of spending, sorry, the interaction of a spending limit and a donations limit, um, which members have not heard detailed evidence about. The draft ballot question, therefore, doesn't ask members to vote for or against a spending limit as such. Instead, it asks members to decide if the possibility of um, a spending limit merits further consideration by the Oireachtas. So the question asks, do you think the Oireachtas should give consideration to a system of spending limits in referendum campaigns for registered political parties and campaign groups. Members can indicate their agreement or disagreement uh, by answering either yes or no. Now moving on to question six. Um, this is the first question in section B, which as you know is voting in a referendum. This question relates to the indi indication we received from the houses of the Oireachtas regarding what aspects of this topic they wished us to consider, the notion of super-referendum days. The question asks, do you think that it is a good idea to have more than one referendum on unrelated issues at the same time? Whichever 
option, either yes or no, uh, receives the highest number of votes will be the Assembly's recommendation in respect of this question. Now, going on to section seven, and um, following the previous question, question six, uh, this question asks, in the event that there is more than one referendum on unrelated issues at the same time, what do you think should be the maximum number of referendums? And then three options are set out. There should be no more than two referendums at the same time. There should be no more than three referendums at the same time. And then there should be no upper limit on the number of ref ref referendums held at the same time. So, uh, members, you're asked to mark an X against one of the three options. The option that receives the highest number of votes will constitute the recommendation of the Assembly in respect of this question. Now, I'm moving on to question eight. Um, yesterday morning, Neve Highland outlined what must happen for a change to the Constitution to be made. The Dáil and Shannon must first approve, approve a referendum bill um, which has been commenced before the All Aaron, uh, and which then must be approved by the people in a referendum. The implication of this is that the Dáil, the Shannon, and the people must consecutively approve the same proposal. This means that, at present, multi-option voting in constitutional re uh, referendums is um, constitutionally prohibited. Uh, yesterday afternoon, Michael Marsh um, provided the members with an overview of how multi-option voting might function in a referendum context. Um, he provided the members with some of the arguments in favour and against such approach, and he had a specific slide in relation to it. Um, the question asks, do you think that it is a good idea to use multi-option voting in referendums? Obviously, the introduction of multi-option voting in referendums would necessitate an amendment of the Constitution following a referendum. Um, whichever option, either yes or no, uh, receives the highest number of votes will be the Assembly's recommendation in respect of this question. Now I'll go on to question nine. Yesterday, Gary Murphy um, drew attention to how the Oireachtas never acted legislation to expand the franchise for election to university seats in the Shannon, as it was permitted to do by a constitutional change approved in ref referendum in 1979. In their feedback, several members suggested that the members should vote on a recommendation that would ensure that this could not happen in relation to uh, if a future referendum. Having discussed it with the EAG, I'm of the view that this again raises complicated issues that might well differ from one referendum to the next. Uh, for this reason, the draft uh, ballot question is raised as follows. Do you agree that, in principle, the Oireachtas and the government should give effect to the outcome of a referendum within five years? Um, whichever option, either yes or no, receives the highest number of votes uh, will be the, the Assembly's recommendation in respect of this question. Now, going on to question 10, um, it asks, which, if any, of these initiatives do you think should be introduced to try to increase voter turnout? Um, and currently we have eight possible initiatives labelled A to H, and uh, you'll see them on the screen. They are A, early voting in the weeks before the poll, B, extended voting over a number of days, uh, C, weekend voting, D, online voting, E, wider availability of postal voting, F, the ability to vote at any polling station in the state. G, um, automatic inclusion of all eligible voters on the electoral register. And H, compulsory voting. Now, for each of the initi initiatives listed, the members are asked to mark X in either the yes or no box. Uh, the result for each initiative will constitute a recommendation of the Assembly. Um, then question 11. Um, this is the only question in section C, which as you know is citizens' initiatives. And yesterday evening, Theresa Reedy explained to us the different types 
of citizens' initiatives which um, exist in other countries. And following this, on the basis of what, what she told us, we are asking um, which, if any, of the following types of citizens' initiatives do you consider should be provided for? And then there are three options. A, a citizens' initiative to put a constitutional rep uh, uh, referendum proposal to the people. B, a citizens' initiative to put legislative change proposal, a legislative change proposal to the people, including enacting, changing, or repealing legislation. And C, a citizens' initiative to put an item on the agenda for decision by the Oireachtas. Now, similar to question eight, uh, recommendation 11A um, would involve a change in the way in which constitutional referendums are currently required to be initiated and would necessitate um, an amendment of the constitution following a referendum. As with question 10, the members are asked to mark X in either the yes or no box uh, beside each initiative. The result of for each initiative will constitute um, an individual recommendation of the Assembly. Now, I just want to make a general observation. Um, in framing the questions, um, the focus has been on the relevant principle um, underlying the relevant question, not on the detail of how it could, could be or might be implemented. Well, that con con concludes what I, the, the explanation I have to give. Um, Members will now move um, into their roundtable discussions and we will um, resume the public session at 11.45 for the feedback and questions and answers before finalising the ballot paper. What? Oh, it's 10.45. Yeah, t of course it is. I said 11.45. Ten yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to have to sit there <laughs> until 11.45. 10.45. <laughs> Thank you very much.